All right, let me put my microphone. A while ago, we bought a Flash Ford Creator Pro 3D printer for a project where we wanted to use, oops, this is not attached. So we wanted to use soluble material for our supporter structure. Um, and so we looked for dual extruder machines that had good quality prints and we could find Flash Forge Creator Pro. And in fact, the quality of the prints that I'm getting from either the left or the right extruders are pretty decent. The problem I have with the machine though is the slicer that came with it. And I think it's called Flash Print if I'm not wrong. Um, and it just doesn't let you do anything except for changing the layer height or changing the infill percentage. And also the supporter structure that it creates is just super bad. Um, and so I was really hoping to find a way that I could either use Kiora or Prusa Slicer with my printer. Um, because both of those slicers have a huge amount of features that are actually important and useful for um, the prints that I wanted to do um, and I still want to do. And so I could find a, a bunch of people who has uh, a bunch of people who have found ways that actually allow you to use both Kira and Prusa Slicer to use your um, Creator Pro. And I'm going to show you how to install a profile that allows for simultaneous dual extrusion inside Kira. Um, I could find um, a handful of other profiles that allow you to use Kira, but the problem with those were that they only allowed for either left or right extruder to work. So essentially just single extrusion, which is not quite exactly why one might buy this machine in the first place, right? But you buy a dual extruder because you want to do dual extrusion. Okay, so let me change my screen so that you can see it better. Okay, so what you want to do is to come down to Eager's um, GitHub. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, but right here what you have is a profile that is defined um, and designed for FlashForge Creator Pro for Cura. So it also has a very good documentation if you have the time or the um, the interest you might want to give it a give it a read. Also I'm of course only going to go over how it can be installed for Windows user. If you are a Mac or Linux user um, you can just give it a quick read and figure out ways that you should adjust the process of installing it and then um, you know install it for your own your own uh, computer or machine so what you want to do is come down to code and click on download zip and then let me move that somewhere you can see better okay so I want to extract this right here and so inside that folder I have a folder called resources inside that folder I have definitions, extruders, and meshes. So the contents of these three folders are essentially just a bunch of settings that are defining your particular printer for Cura. So if you go to, for example, to definitions, you'll see a creatorpro.def file. This is a JSON file that if you open it with, I believe you can open this file with any text editor. I have Visual Studio Code. Um, but you see right here you have a whole lot of uh, settings allow a whole lot of settings that are particular to this printer so the height the depth and the width all those stuff right um, this doesn't matter for this tutorial per se but um, now you know what's inside these uh, these folders okay so the next thing you want to do is let me open up a new file explorer and go to the location where I have installed my Cura. So that would be in C, Program Files, um, Ultimaker Cura 4.8. This is also the newest version of Cura, but I believe you should be able to use the same method of installing this profile for 4.4 and above. Um, but again, give that um, the README a read again if, if you are using an older version. So again, you want to go to the resources folder, right? This is the same 
as what we had here. So again, we have resources inside the path that we have installed Cura and a resources where we just download, downloaded a, a, a profile, right? So what you want to do is to copy the content of each folder into its corresponding folder inside your installation path. So I'm going to go to definitions and I'm going to copy these to, to my definitions, right? I'm going to click paste and it asks for administration because you're essentially installing um, a new printer inside your Cura, right? So the way it usually works is that you have your Cura itself and then you just come down to your current printer which is Ultimaker S5 right now. This is the default one. And then you're going to click on Add Printer. If you can't find it from here, you can also go to Setting, Printer, and then Add Printer. Either way works. And then you want to come down to Non-Network Printers. And then here you have a huge list of all the 3D printers that already do work with Cura, right? This is a very big library of all the machines that are already installed here. Unfortunately, you do not have FlashForge. Let me go up to F. You have other Fs, but not FlashForge, right? But that's okay. We're going to just do that right now. Um, anyway, the, the number one rule of buying from Chinese manufacturers is to not complain. Okay, so here, again, we're back inside the definitions folder. And you want to do it as administrator because you're just installing a new printer. I'm going to click continue for both the files. I'm going to come back to resources again. I'm going to go to extruders, copy these two inside extruder folders inside my Cura. Doing the same process again for extruders. Then the last one is meshes. This is not a definition file. This is an STL file that sort of helps you with just some visual representation of what actually your bit is going to look like. And also this is something very cool and uh, handy because you probably have experienced it before where when you import a file into your bit print and it's not showing anything. Like if it's only this box right here and doesn't have the bit, like you now have the bit, right? You can tell this is the back side, this is the front side. Um, but if you don't have it, you're just going to you know, rotate around it a while, and then all of a sudden you don't know which side is it that you're looking at. It's either the back or the front, you can't tell. And it's going to be even more confusing if it's uh, a cubic build plate. This is obviously a rectangular build plate, but this is something very handy. So let me pull these back up again. So you want to copy this just the same way into your meshes pro in your meshes folder. If you do not have the meshes, folder inside your Cura, you might want to create that folder, again, as an administrator. So I'm going to come down to meshes because I do have that folder, and then I'm going to paste it here. Let's see if I have copied it. Copy, paste, there you go. So right now, you should hopefully have the Flash Forge installed in your side, your Cura. Let me come down see if I have done it right okay it doesn't show right now so I believe we have to sort of restart our cure let me close that and open it up again see if it shows up um, yeah let's see if it works and again this allows you to do dual extrusion which is very important okay let's come down and here we have FlashForge, and inside that we have FlashForge Create Pro. So that was actually a good thing that it happened. If it doesn't show up, you might want to close and then reopen your uh, your Cura. So once you click on Add, then here you have your print bed, and this is exactly the correct size of your build plate inside your machine. And so the way you can confirm that is to come to setting and go to printer and then manage printers and so you see this is the activated one because this one is grayed out and you have access to the machine settings and update firmware 
So you want to click on machine settings and you see here you have all the parameters that are uh, particular to your machine. So X, Y, Z, whether it's a rectangular or something else, whether it has a heated bed and all those stuff, right? And it also has the right and the left extruder. So this thing should be good to go, except for one last thing that you should um, pay attention to. So I believe you have noticed that um, the format of the files that you create with the flash print, the slicer from the Flash Forge itself, um, those are not G-code files, right? Those are X3G application files. And the difference is G-code is a bunch of text and X3G is a bunch of binary codes, just a bunch of numbers. And Creative Pro only understands binary. So this right here is GPXUI, which is a post-processing utility that translates G codes to X3G files, right? And it actually works pretty fine. So what you can also do is just as you would do normally, a slice it inside Cura and then get those G code files send them to this converter and then get the x3g files and send those to your machine right and i have used it and it has worked this thing is this is not an automated process right like you have to do it each time that you generate a g code with your slicer and it will take a whole lot of time if you're using your printer regularly so what you want to do is do this you want to come down back to your Cura and then go to marketplace and one of the plugins that you can find inside the marketplace is called x3g writer which is essentially doing the, just the same thing but in a more automated manner so you don't have to do it each time but the Cura itself does that for you so you want to come down here and find x3g writer you see I have already installed it um, but if you don't have it install it from here and then you have to close and open your Cura again. If you can't find it from the plugins, you might want to click on Web Marketplace and then search for X3G Writer. And so right now, if we are lucky, and in, let me bring something in. Okay, so right now, I'm going to slice this. And normally what I would expect from Cura is to save it as a G-code file for me, right? So let me see what is it doing now. You see, this is already translated and converted to X3G file. And that has saved the process of me sending the G-code file to another post-processor and then getting the file and sending it then to the 3D printer for me. It has saved me that process. So you see, this is already an X3G file and it is working. So you should be hopefully good to go by this point. Let me see if I can use another material yeah okay so it is working and I have tried it before and it has worked just fine for me also let me change my camera to where you can see these two files okay so you see I have printed these two also simultaneously with just the, the same profile that I showed you um, one thing that you might want to be aware of let me see if I can show it here so you see how this little nasty blue lines inside this file? The thing is, if you are by any chance not using your dual extrusion capabilities, right? Like you, if you're only using one of them, let's say either your left or your right extruder, you might want to disable whichever extruder that you are not using so, that, so it doesn't heat up to... Uh, it's melting temperature right because once it does melt up once it does um, heat up to, to melting temperature um, it's sort of unavoidable to have some material oozing out from the tip of the nozzle and the way you should do that is to go to setting go to either the left or the right extruder whichever you're not using and then click on disable extruder and then that should be it. This way, you have the ability to do dual extrusion with your current profile, and then you can also do single extrusion, right? 
The other profiles that I did not show today, they only allowed for single extrusion. So that should be it. This should um, work for your purposes and I hope this has helped in some ways. I, I was thinking about probably making another video about what was inside the files that we just copied in, into our definitions and extruded folders, right? I mean, those are just JSON files that have a bunch of settings and someone has created those, right? Like, it was not the company. It was the eager guy that I just showed you. It's, it's GitHub. And so I thought maybe it might be useful to some of you also to know how to create that. Um, and if I get around a time where I can make that video as well, I will work on that too. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. Let me see if it worked for you or not, and hopefully people can help you in the comments.